In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use your own logo or any other images to make your own custom transitions. So stay tuned. I'm just a normal person with no video editing background who wanted to start making YouTube videos and maybe cool transitions and effects. I don't really plan on being a professional video editor, so I was looking for a free, easy to learn video editing software. Luckily, I stumbled on Shotcut, a free open source video editing program that can do many of the tricks you can do on more enterprise video editors like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, but with a much simpler and leaner interface, thus dramatically shortening the learning curve. It just takes using your imagination. So let's learn together. This tutorial will be done on Shotcut version 20.11.28. So in this tutorial, we're actually going to start a little bit backwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the actual transition file first before we get into Shotcut. And in this instance, you're going to need some sort of photo editing software. And it just happens that I have access to Photoshop, so I'm going to be doing it with Photoshop. And in this example, I'm going to be using my own logo, which is this one. And so what I'm trying to do is start out with a cutout of my logo and then for it to grow across the page until it takes up the entire page. Um, it's going to make a lot more sense once I finish this. So first, let's start out with my logo. In order for this to work, you first need to make sure that the starting logo or whatever shape you're going to start out with is in grayscale. So I'm going to make this whole thing black and white. And in Photoshop, you go image, mode, grayscale. And I'm not going to merge. Now, there is a logical order of how the transition kind of merges into the next image and really the way it goes is whatever you make the darkest is the first thing that becomes invisible and as it gets lighter that's the next thing that becomes invisible again all of this is going to make more sense once I, once I show you this whole thing first and foremost I need to make sure that this particular logo here that I'm starting out with which is going to be my punch out is 100% black. So I'm going to go image, adjust levels, and I'm going to go to black, make sure that that's 100% black. And I'm going to set this part here to make sure that that whole thing is 100% black. Okay, again, it probably doesn't make any sense right now but after I finish this whole thing, it's gonna make even more sense. So the next thing I'm gonna do is make a copy of it, send it behind the first one, increase the size a little bit. Uh, like so, Let, let's say that's how I want it to transition. And then I'm gonna kind of gonna center it. And so this bigger BE logo is actually behind the smaller one. But again, I want to control the order of how the transition comes in. So this next one here, I'm once again going to go image, adjust, levels. We're going to make it 80% black. All right. Select that and make it 80% black. And then I'm going to make a copy of that again. And then I'm going to make that bigger. Let's say like that. And then I'm going to change this color to an even lighter color. 
So again, I'm going to go to Image Adjust Levels. I'm going to select the black dropper. Um, I set it 80 last time. I'm going to do, let's do 60. So 20 20% increments. Okay. And then last but not least, I'm going to make another copy, scale, and this is the one that's pretty much going to take up the whole screen almost. Let's say like that. And then I'm going to go image, adjust levels, select the black. Um, what did I do? 180, 60, so this one's going to be 40. So now that's even lighter. I need to make sure that's at the very bottom. And then finally, I'm just going to go and add another layer at the bottom. And I'm just going to go and add 40. So let's say 20. I'm just going to black out the background, just like that. And so once again, the inner BE is the darkest, followed by the next smallest one, followed by the next one after that. And then the biggest BE is the lightest one at 40% black. And then the whole background is 20% black. So that's going to be the order of how the transition happens. So you... It doesn't matter how you want the transition to go, as long as the first step is always going to be the darkest black and the last step is always going to be the lightest black. So, make sure that the desktop or the file that you're working with is the same size as the video that you're going to use it for in terms of in terms of transition so I'm just going to show you image image size so this one I have set to 1920 at 1080 and so I can I'm going to be able to use this transition for any video that's at 1920 by 1080 so now I need to save it so file save as let's just call it logo transition and make sure that it's a png file actually it's even if you save it as a jpeg it's okay but for all intents and purposes on let's just save it as a png file so now we're going to save that so we have just created a transition file so now i can exit photoshop and we can go back into shotcut and I'm going to show you how we use something like this. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're back in Shotcut. And hopefully once I demonstrate how the transition works, it's going to make a lot more sense to you. And so I downloaded two random videos. So this is the first one. This is the video of leaves. And then this is the second one. Okay, so let's look at what my settings are. So under video mode, I have it set for 1080p, meaning that it is 1920 by, by 1080. Uh, this, this particular video, the second video, happens to have a different uh, aspect ratio, so I'm gonna have to resize that a little bit. So let's drag the first video onto the timeline. So that's the first video. Right, and it doesn't really matter what video it is. And I'm gonna drag the second video. I'm gonna play it. And just for consistency sake, I'm going to increase the size of this second video to make sure these black bars disappear. 
And so while that is selected, I'm going to go to filters. And I'm going to choose size, position, and rotate. And I'm just going to use actually the scroll mouse, the scroller, just to bump it up a little bit, just like that. And we should be good to go. So before we add a transition, this is how it cuts. It's like that, all right? But I want, what I want to do is I want to use a custom transition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the second video and all I'm going to do is drag it right into the first video. And I'm assuming that this is how long I want the transition to last. So at this point, when I do this, I'm actually going to drop the preview scaling a little bit. Let's say, let's, uh, let's drop it to 540. Okay. At this, at this moment, the minute you drag one video into the other, it defaults to the transition called dissolve. And this is what dissolve looks like, right? Simple enough. But while you have this transition section chosen, which is this box with an X in the middle, you can go to properties right here. And as you can see, it defaults to dissolve. You can actually drop down all the way down to custom, meaning you can add your own custom transition. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the custom transition that we just created in Photoshop. And I happen to call that logo transition. And so I'm going to open that. And all of a sudden, this is what the transition looks like. You notice that you see the that it started out with the BE, a small BE in the middle. And then all of a sudden it got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then and the transition was a little long, so we can actually grab this this overlap and shrink it. And let's now speed up. You see that? So that's what I was talking about when I was making the file. So, so the order of how the transition blends in is based on how dark the, the image is. So we started out having the smallest BE as the darkest, and then the next smallest was the next darkest, and then the third, which I believe was at, at by this time we were at 60%, while there we were at 80%, and then it covered up the screen. And in this case, all I'm doing, all I was doing was using my own logo as a basically punch transition. I'm punching right into the previous video into the next video. See that? Now, I happen to have started in the middle. And so I made the file in the middle darkest and then as it grew, I made it lighter. But you don't necessarily need to start in the middle. And so First and foremost, I don't want to take credit for this particular transition or this particular tutorial because I actually learned this tutorial from a fellow Shotcut member by the name of John Ray. And so he happened to show me that you can use your own images for transitions. In fact, he's donated a bunch of transitions and so I'll show you a couple of them. So in this instance, he created one called Diagonal Rain, right? And as you can see, he doesn't start, the, the darkest part doesn't start in the middle, which means that these dark parts up here will be the start of the punch out. And then you have the, the grayer areas here. And then last but not least would be this area right there, right? 
do you notice the gradation in terms of darkest to lightest? Now, this is called diagonal rain. And so we're going to go back and instead of using my logo transition under custom, right? We're, we're going to use diagonal rain. Let me just give me a second to find it. Uh, go into transitions and he called it diagonal rain. All right. And so this is what that looks like. So if you notice, because the darkest areas were at the very top up here, let's go back to Photoshop up here. You can assume that when the blend begins, it's going to, it's going to start from here. So I'm going to just move the arrow keys one by one. So you can see how the transition begins to blend like that. And so that's what John Ray calls diagonal rain. Let's look at another transition that he created. So let's close this one out. And so he called this one checkerboard, top left. So this is checkerboard. And if you notice, again, the darkest areas happen to be on the top left. And then as you move, you notice it gets lighter and lighter. So we're going to assume that when we use this transition, it kind of swipes from left to right with a checkerboard pattern. So let's go back here. So again, while the transition area is selected, we're going to go to custom and we're now going to choose, find it again. checkerboard top left. And so again, I'm going to move it frame by frame so you can see how the transition occurs, right? So again, going back to any of the photo editing software that you have, all you have to do is make sure that whatever you want to start with, whatever the first punch out is going to be, that needs to be the darkest area. And so there's a lot of different opportunities and a lot of creative ways that you can implement a transition, including the way I did it, which is using my own logo to do it. It could be a bat signal. It could be an Autobot symbol, whatever, right? And so if you have an existing logo, it's a great way for you to use that as, as a transition point instead of kind of just using any of the other default transitions out there. Um, and so the, the implications, the utilization is, is endless. And so again, let me go back and use my logo. Go in here. Um, So now I'm going to be using my logo and that happens to be really quick. Oh, cause we sped it up. So I could actually pull it back a little bit just to make it a little bit more gradual. See that? Um, So pretty simple, nothing really technical, at least on the shortcut side. The one caveat is you do need to have some sort of photo editing software. I happen to use Photoshop, which is something that you have to pay a subscription for, but there are other freeware out there. There are other open source software that you can use. And the one that seems to be the favorite among the shortcut users is one called GIMP. Now, I am not an expert on GIMP, and so I wish I can show you 
the way you can do it on GIMP, but I'm sure one of the other stock cut members will be able to donate their time and kind of come up with a GIMP version of what I did on Photoshop. But worst case scenario, and I'm gonna put this out there, let's say you're in a pinch and you have your own logo and you don't have access to any of this, uh, any of these photo editing softwares, what you can do is um, you can comment me on this video and maybe I can, I can create a specific logo transition for you. Uh, it is gonna take me some time, so maybe, I don't know, I'll charge you maybe five bucks. I don't know, is that fair? I'll charge you five bucks. Send me your logo and I will create a custom transition just like I did for my own logo. Does that sound fair? In any case, I hope this was helpful. Um, it's pretty simple, but you have you, you need a transition file. The other thing, I want to uh, I want to share the love. And so John Ray was kind enough to share his folder of custom transitions that he's already created. And I am also willing to share that with you guys. So you know the drill. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe to my channel, and comment. I want John Ray's transition. And that's it. Again, just like how I share my LUTs with you, I'm going to reach out to you. I'm going to ask you for your email address, and then I will share that file with you. Don't try to get to that file without asking for it first because it is password protected. So just follow those steps. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, comment, I want John Ray's transitions. And I will share John Ray's transitions with you. I hope this one is helpful. And again, if you're in a pinch and you need someone to create a specific logo transition for you, I'll help you out, but I gotta charge you. So let's say five bucks is the price. In any case, I'll see you next time. I just wanted to remind you that if you haven't yet, go visit my channel. I'm sure you'll find tons of shortcut related videos. And don't forget to subscribe so that you know when I drop a new shortcut related tutorial. Every video on my channel was done on shortcut. So aside from examples of what shortcut can do, you can also visit my playlist of tips and tutorials, all geared toward the beginner. Visit my shortcut tips and tricks playlist and learn all the tips and tricks I've learned during my journey toward video editing. So once again, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.